Alright, hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing my top books of Q4 of 2018. So this is from October, November, December. Appreciate I'm a little bit late on this, but we're getting there, and then there will be my top 40 books of 2018, which is basically all of my uh, quarterly wrap-ups, but then all of them mashed together to find my favourites, and also my five worst ones, which might not be a surprise to some of you. So we're going to go ahead and jump straight in. So, book number one, so this is in at number ten. This is Calm by Tim Parks, and this is one of the vintage mini moderns. And uh, basically, this is all about Tim Parks basically was having a few health problems, and he'd been uh, advised to try meditation and mindfulness. So he went off to a yoga retreat, he was very sceptical about it all, and actually, he kind of comes away with it, with like a different point of view on it all. Carries on and in his personal life he's doing a lot of meditation at home, etc. And then he goes on another meditation retreat. And then this one doesn't quite go so well. And what I liked about this is he's very honest about it all. He's kind of a skeptic as well, so I kind of could see myself in him. And that just made it really relatable. And I think meditation is something that personally I should probably be doing, but that I don't do. So, um... Yeah, it was interesting to read about it, and uh, I would recommend this if this sounds like the kind of thing you're into. It's actually excerpted from a longer book called Teach Us to Sit Still, but I would probably say just get this, the Vintage Mini, because I think I would have got bored reading about this for a full book, but as it was, this was a perfect size, and that's why it made it into my top ten. All right, number nine, we have Electric G- uh, Number ten, we- Number nine- <laughs> We'll just leave that bit in. Number nine, we have Electric Dreams, the collected works of Jim will paint it. So Jim will paint it is an internet celebrity. He basically creates all of this artwork in Microsoft Paint and he takes requests from people. So here is Brian Blessed punching a polar bear. Let's flick through and get some random ones so you can get a feel. Here is Coronation Street Fighter 2. Will probably make more sense if you're British. A lot of these are like stuff that will make more sense if you're British. Boris Johnson fighting off an alien invasion. What else we got? Larry David is a superhero. Dear Jim, I work in nightclub bookings and have recently received separate emails asking if I'd like to book Coolio, David Hasselhoff and the smallest DJ in the world. I'm debating putting them all on together on the same night, so could you paint it for me so I can see if it's a good idea or not? Thanks, Jim. And that's what it looks like. So yeah, I gave this a 5 out of 5 just because it's hilarious. Like I say, it is quite a British sense of humour, so if you're not British, you might not get all of the references, but I would still say you'll get enough to, you know, enjoy it. Uh, it's published by Faber and Faber because they publish all of the most important literature, you see. And all in all, very excited to have read this one, and I'm also excited because there is another book coming out soon through Unbound. Okay, number 8, we have The Red Tree by Sean Tan. So this is a bit like a... A hybrid between a graphic novel and a poem. So I, uh, every time I've done this, I've read a little bit out of it. But we'll do it again because why not? So it's a mixture of this really beautiful artwork and such beautiful words. So sometimes the day begins with nothing to look forward to, and things go from bad to worse. I would definitely recommend it. Okay, coming in at number 10, 9, 8. Coming in at number 7, we have Shirley Jackson, The Haunting of Hill House. So I picked this up because of the Netflix series. I wanted to read it before I watched the series. Uh, I thought the series was okay. The, the Netflix show I would give like three, three and a half stars to. And then this for me was four, four and a half. And what I liked about this was the way that it built tension. It reminded me a lot of Henry James's The Turn of the Screw. It also had like an ambiguous ending near the end, which I liked. I also really liked, see if I can find it, the, uh, the, the paragraph when they first saw Hill House. Here we go. She turned her car onto the last stretch of straight drive, leading her directly, face to face, to Hill House, and, moving without thought, pressed her foot on the brake to stall the car and sat staring. The house was vile. She shivered and thought, the words coming freely into her mind. Hill House is vile. It is diseased. Get away from here at once. And that actually reminded me of Rebecca and Mrs. De Winter's first impressions of Mandalay when she goes there with Maxim De Winter. So, yeah, there were just lots of... It, it felt new, but it also felt like a bit of a homage to some of the other books that I've read and enjoyed recently as well. And so for that, couldn't fault it. I have heard one or two negative reviews about it on uh, on the booktubes, but I, I'm pretty sure that's because people watched the Netflix show first and then didn't get the same book. 
Anyway, here we have in at number 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We have Dragons at Crumbling Castle by Terry Pratchett. And so this is basically a collection of short stories that he wrote basically as a teenager and in his early 20s. He used to work as a reporter for the Books Free Press, which is my local newspaper. The office is actually about a mile and a half down that way. And uh, yeah, it was just interesting. I mean, even in the introduction, he talks about Buckinghamshire. All the stories are kind of set in small British towns kind of in the 1960s. Obviously, a lot has changed since then. But it was still interesting to read about, especially because it's my local area. Pratchett is my most read author. And also there were some stories in this that basically form the backbone of what later became The Carpet People, which is his first novel, which I don't think got published at the time, but then it got published later. And so even on the author bio of it or whatever it says, The Carpet People was co-written by Terry Pratchett, aged 19, and Terry Pratchett, aged 43, because he went back to it as an adult and... Uh, tidied it up so yeah if you're a Pratchett aficionado you're gonna love this if you're into middle grade or short stories you're gonna love it very humorous lots of nods to things like King Arthur and you've got your dragons so it's kind of fantasy but also kind of set in the real world okay at number five we have where's my cow also by Terry Pratchett so this is like an illustrated children's book but what's interesting about this one is that basically in the Discworld books Commander Sam Vimes has a, uh, a child called Sam Jr. or Young Sam and uh, it says here Every day Commander Sam Vimes of the City Watch would be home at 6 o'clock sharp to read to Young Sam who was one year old. 6 o'clock no matter what or who or why because some things are important. And we have some nice images here. So actually in the books Where's My Cow is mentioned and then uh, this is like a really strange book really because it it's kind of the actual book from the Discworld, but also it's not because because um, basically Vimes updates it. He's like, this book's boring. I'm going to tell you a, a real story. He tried it the very next night. It went, where's my daddy? Is that my daddy? It goes, bugger it, Millennium Hand and Shrimp. It is foul or run. That's not my daddy. And so lots of references to the Discworld there that if you're a Discworld fan, you're going to recognize and you're going to love it. Maybe not so much. I wouldn't actually read this to a child, I don't think. And I also wouldn't recommend it if you've never read Discworld, because, again, a lot of the humour there is kind of inherent to it. All right, and these last four are all kind of shorter ones. So in at number four, we have Race by Toni Morrison. So these are uh, selections from Song of Solomon, The Bluest Eye, and Beloved. I read this on the train home for Christmas. It made me feel very uncomfortable, but I think that's what books like these are supposed to. I was also kind of impressed by how... All of the characters were racist in this. It wasn't just like, you know, a black writer attacking white people for racism. She showed that black people can be racist too. Like, everybody can be racist. And arguably everybody is to a certain extent. And books like this, I think, are all about making you question that. To look at your own privilege. I mean, I think most of us are privileged. Unless we're, like, living in poverty in, like, Ethiopia or something like that. We're pretty privileged. I mean, if we've got access to running water, the internet and food... We're pretty privileged. So so I think this book was good at making you kind of realise that. But also it's just beautifully written. It also includes an essay that was written recently about Donald Trump. So uh, you can imagine how that goes. <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, I recommend this one. And I, I look forward to reading more of Toni Morrison's stuff. Okay, number three, we have Zaolo Guo, a language. I probably butchered her name. This is uh, selections from a concise Chinese to English dictionary for lovers. Basically, the author of this moved to the UK from China, I believe from communist China. And uh, she's just learning the language. And this is actually written in the way that... Um, oh, what's the word? In like the dialect or whatever in uh, in the idiosyncratic way in which she spoke so i'm going to read you my favorite paragraph from this to give you a feel for it night long and lonely staying nervously in tacky room london should be like emperor's city but i cannot feel it noise coming from other room laughing in drunkenly way upstairs tv news speaking intensely nonsense often the man shouting like mad in the street i worry i worry i getting lost and nobody in china can find me anymore how I finding important places including Buckingham Palace or Big Stupid Clock? I look everywhere but not seeing big posters of David Beckham, Spicy Girls or President Margaret Thatcher. In China we hanging them everywhere. English person not respect their heroes or what? So I think when I mentioned this in my uh, reading vlog, somebody commented saying like that sounds like it'd get annoying after a while. 
it did not. I think it added a lot to the book. And, um, yeah, it's just really interesting to sort of see this outside perspective on the country I live in, I suppose. And also just to see what it looks like through the eyes of somebody who's never been to the UK, who's been raised in a very different culture, and what happens when they first first come to the country. Even bits like she meets this guy, that's why the, uh, the book it's actually from is called A Concise Chinese Eng English Dictionary for Lovers, because she falls in love with an Englishman. And he's a vegetarian and she cannot wrap her head around it. Which I thought was quite interesting because I'm vegan. In at number two we have Joseph Heller, Work. And this is selected from the book Something Happened. So basically this is kind of like a humorous but also dark take on office life. Heller's obviously known for writing Catch-22. But uh, I haven't read that one yet. And I, honestly having read this I want to read Something Happened before I read Catch-22. And so I probably will do. Hella's awesome, really good writer and just, again, very humorous. For me, it was very relatable because I used to work in an office. Just things like office politics, the bickering that goes on, like the two-facedness, all of this stuff. Uh, yeah, just just really, it was humorous but thought-provoking at the same time and it makes me glad that I no longer work in an office. And finally, my favourite book of Q4 and it is Shaking Hands with Death by Terry Pratchett. So it's the third Pratchett book on this list. So I'm going to read the blurb of this because I think that will give you a good... Well, there are details in the blurb that I won't remember off the top of my head. Why we all deserve a life worth living and a death worth dying for. Most men don't fear death. They fear those things, the knife, the shipwreck, the illness, the bomb, which proceed by microseconds if you're lucky and many years if you're not, the moment of death. When Terry Pratchett was diagnosed with Alzheimer's in his 50s, he was angry. Not with death, but with the disease that would take him there, and with the suffering disease can cause when we are not allowed to put an end to it. In this essay, broadcast to millions as the BBC Richard Dimbleby Lecture 2010, he argues for our right to choose, our right to a good life and a good death too. And obviously, it's kind of haunting reading this after he did, you know, pass away due to his battle with the disease, but... Also, I totally agree with him when it comes to his thoughts on euthanasia. And um, I just think the way that it, this was argued, it was passionately argued, it was personal, it was powerful. And just if you have any interest in like elderly care, Alzheimer's, dementia, which I do because of two of my grandparents and also it's what my mum does for a living. Uh, my best friend or one of my best friends, her, uh, her gran has dementia and so she actually works as a carer for her. And it's just a vile, vile disease. It's, it's awful. And I, I'm not going to lie, I, I, I didn't cry, but I did well up a few times at this one. And I just, honestly, you should read this, whether you're a Pratchett fan or not. It's just beautiful. So yeah, there we have it. There are my top 10 books of Q4. I will be back again shortly with my top 40 books of 2018, as well as my five worst. Kind of the reason I haven't got around to it yet is because it takes forever to find the 40 books on my shelves and then to put them in the order, then to film it, and then to put them all bloody back again. But I'll get there, don't worry. So in the meantime, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.